I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. State Department spokesperson Ned Price spoke about Russia's bombing of the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv at a press conference on Monday. He restated the State Department's stance that there is, quote, clear evidence that Russia has committed war crimes while denouncing recent missile attacks on Kyiv. The city had not seen attacks in around a month after Ukrainian forces pushed Russians out of the area with the fighting now contained entirely in the east of the country. Putin threatened to attack other parts of Ukraine if the country receives long-range weapons. This this came after the U.S. agreed to send medium-range rocket systems to aid the Ukrainian forces. Take a listen to Price's remarks. What's the U.S. view of Russia's renewed bombing of Kyiv? Is this President Putin sending a message to the West about the arms that it's sending to Ukraine now or to the return to a broader military objective in the Donbass? And does the renewed bombing campaign of Kyiv change um, operations at Embassy Kyiv at all? Well, there have been a number of examples of Russia's brutality where uh, we have uh, had to question uh, whether there was any military objective undergirding it uh, or whether it was just an attempt to terrorize uh, the population of Ukraine, including the civilian population of Ukraine, and uh, targeting uh, sites on the outskirts of uh, Ukraine uh, could clearly fall uh, into that category. Uh, the attacks that we've seen in recent days, however, of course, are not limited uh, to the capital. Uh, the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv noted uh, that Russia's bombardment hit a historic Orthodox um, monument in Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, a sacred site uh, in Ukraine that had served as a, as a refuge, a place of refuge for fleeing civilians uh, since the brutal war uh, in Ukraine began. Uh, these attacks have been senseless, what appear to be senseless affronts uh, to Ukraine's people, uh, to Ukraine's uh, government as well. The ongoing violence continues to take the form of attacks that uh, have injured, killed civilians, destroyed civilian infrastructure, uh, and that follows previous strikes that have uh, hit civilian hospitals, schools, religious sites, the infamous strike on the theater in Mariupol, a busy railway station of uh, civilians attempting to uh, flee for uh, their lives. There have been clear examples of Russia's brutality that amount to war crimes. And we have made public our assessment uh, that Russia's forces have committed war crimes in the context of this campaign. Uh, not only do we continue to uh, stand with our Ukrainian partners to provide them uh, the security assistance uh, that they have put to extraordinary effect uh, to defend their freedom, to defend their democracy, to defend their country. Uh, but uh, we have also uh, provided our Ukrainian partners uh, with economic support, with humanitarian support, and we've continued at the same time uh, to impose uh, those significant costs, the costs that we promised well before Russia's, the start of Russia's uh, full-scale invasion on February 24th. Uh, that you've seen in the form of financial sanctions uh, and export controls. The attacks on Kyiv specifically, do they alter plans for operations at Embassy Kyiv? Or, you know? There's been no change uh, in our posture. As you know, we resumed embassy operations at Embassy Kyiv uh, last month. Uh, since then, uh, our team at the embassy has continued to engage with Ukrainian officials, uh, to engage with the Ukrainian people, uh, including representatives of civil society as well. Russia is uh, 